welcome to it, you beautiful souls. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Graham Richards. And I'm Raul de Mornay, nourishing you Yay. with all the beautiful things when it comes to health and fitness, as you may know already. <laughs> Nourishment, I like yes. that word. That's going to be our inspirational word. That's all about inspiration today. It's a Tuesday edition of Expresso, obviously, where we're going to hopefully inspire you on a number of tracks. We're going to inspire you in the kitchen with some great recipes. We're going to give you uh, what I'm hoping is going to be a really effective and helpful workout, especially if you've got a bad back, if you've injured your back. We're not going to be doing rehab. We're going to be training around the back because we're not health professionals. Yeah. Um, but I've obviously, I've had an injured back for a while now, but I need to stay active. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to you giving me some I'm tips. I'm excited. That. I've, I've unfortunately also gone through a similar issue. So I can inspire you to, to get to the end once again, but we're oh, going to be geez. taking you through one incredible morning of just recovery and strengthening this beautiful vessel that we've been blessed with. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I'm really looking forward to that. And we're going to also obviously continue a very informative and important conversation about the current COVID-19 pandemic and how schooling activity in particular has been affected. I think yeah. it's a good time to try to relate to others and I've been spending a lot of time thinking about what this must be like for matriculant students especially, man. Absolute horror. I mean, I'm trying to study currently right now, Graham, and it's already a challenge in my older uh, days. <laughs> I can't even imagine what it must have been like in matric. I think I might have just pulled the plug. <laughs> yeah, you know what old feels like, buddy. You know it, man. But, we, but we'll get into that with our back exercises just now. Um, but it's obviously an opportunity for all of us to, I think, just connect as well. So please stay connected with us on social media and hopefully we can inspire you with this quote as well. Morning, ladies. Good morning, boys. <laughs> These two can talk for days. Love the banter. It's not a quote, G. We just want everyone to connect with us on social media. Because, yes. you know, in these times, everyone is so stressed. You're trying to have, like, a routine, trying to do homeschooling, trying to manage your time. Yes. So that is the all-important question that we have posted on our social media today. The lockdown has affected everyone across the board, especially students. And we want to know that time management can be a challenge when learning online. How have you structured your child's homeschooling during lockdown? What does their daily schedule look like? Let us know on our social media platforms using the hashtag Expressos2. Where not, Jamie? With my little cute little bubba. What are you doing with I him? I get anxiety when people ask me this because it, I, I'm trying to have a routine, but it's so difficult mm. because you don't want to like push it in. Whatever Luca wants, Luca gets. I mean, he Whatever calls Luca you wants. every single day. So he's like, I can cook I think it's oh, I love him it's part so of it. much. Part of I can't it. wait for the lockdown to be lifted so that we can see <laughs> each other and mingle. Right now, though, it's time to get on with the order of the day. But first, those also important news headlines with Grain. Thank you so much, ladies. Let's start with our all-important COVID update first. So Health Minister William Kieser says, as the country prepares for the easing of lockdown regulations, high-risk age groups and those with comorbidities such as hypertension, diabetes, cardiac disease, obesity and people living with HIV must take extra precautions and the necessary steps to avoid possible exposure to COVID-19. Mkhize also confirmed that there had been 918 new confirmed cases. That was yesterday, taking the total in the country to 16,400. And the total COVID-19 related deaths had increased to 286, while the number of recoveries to date has risen now to 7,298 confirmed. Then coming down to the mother city, the city of Cape Town says it has developed a dynamic economic and social recovery plan post-COVID-19 lockdown. In a statement yesterday, Mayor Dan Plato said the Metro continued to adjust its economic impact modelling and scenarios and is working closely with small and big business to minimise the loss of employment. He said they would continue to prioritise the safety of residents while responsibly calling for the opening up of the economy because they simply cannot allow the economy to be stalled any longer. And further afield on the international front, US President Donald Trump has said he is taking hydroxychloroquine to ward off coronavirus. Now, speaking at the White House, he told reporters he started taking the malaria and lupus medication recently, but there is no scientific evidence that hydroxychloroquine can fight off coronavirus, but clinical trials are currently underway to see if it is effective. Meanwhile, the US Food and Drug Administration has cited um, reports that the drug can cause serious heart rhythm problems in COVID-19 patients and warned against the use of the medication outside of hospitals. Then the governor of Mudug, a region in Somalia's semi-autonomous state of Puntland, was killed with three of his bodyguards in a suicide car bombing on Sunday and was claimed by Islamist group Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab has been fighting for years to topple Somalia's western-backed central government, frequently carrying out bombings in the country and elsewhere in the region. The group wants to establish its own rule in the Horn of Africa country based on its own strict interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. 
And now, how stir-crazy penguins experienced a taste of human culture. So not to be outdone by the penguins of San Diego's famous zoo we reported on yesterday morning, a group of Humboldt penguins in Kansas City, Missouri, were taken on an outing to the local art museum. This to shake off pandemic blues as quarantine has caused everyone to go a little stir-crazy, even the residents of the Kansas City Zoo. So in a video posted by the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art, a family of penguins can be seen waddling through the empty halls, getting a little taste of human culture. And every now and then they even pause to gaze at the artwork around them. And zoo director Randy Wistoff says the penguins are especially missing visitors coming up to see them and added that they absolutely loved their museum field trip. So both the museum and zoo have been closed since mid-March because of the coronavirus pandemic. Now taking a quick squiz into the world of entertainment. If you know an inspiring child who is making a big difference in their communities, then listen up as there is a chance to show the world just how awesome they are. Mzanzi comedian Trevor Noah, along with Nickelodeon, Time Magazine and Time for Kids, are coming together for a new multi-platform initiative to recognize extraordinary young leaders who are making a positive impact in their communities in the first ever search for Kid of the Year. Submissions for nominations run up until the 1st of August giving uh, parents, teachers, even friends time to nominate a child between the ages of 8 and 16 who is doing incredible and inspiring things to make the world a better place. So four honorees alongside the Kid of the Year will be featured in a TV special hosted by Trevor Noah himself, and that's in December. And each of the finalists will also receive funds to further their respective causes. Explaining his involvement, uh, Trevor says the person who's going to bring us a better tomorrow is a kid out there who's doing it today. So you can start thinking on who your Kid of the Year should be as we move into the weather. Thank you very much, Graham Richards. It's time for us to take a look at the weather across the country. But first of all, we take a look at your sunrise pictures, which we have asked you to send through. Nombulelo Zandilegama had a fantastic view this morning of the sun rising in the distance while her, uh, well, on her way back uh, to Soweto to work, rather, and couldn't wait to share it with us. Take a look at that beautiful, beautiful picture. Soweto can expect hazy sunshine today with a light northwesterly breeze that's going at six kilometers per hour and reaching a high of 22 kilometers around. 22 degrees and Karen Edwards wishes us a very happy Tuesday with this very incredible beach sunrise picture showing off the different shades of yellow and orange all the way from Durban South Africa's playground can expect mainly cloudy conditions today with a maximum temperature of 25 degrees thank you to both Nombulelo and Karen for sending their pictures through we hope you have a fantastic Tuesday now it will be another fine and cool day across most parts of the country but let's take a look at the temperatures we start off with Bulukwani 8 is your low today, reaching a high of 24 with mainly cloudy conditions for Bombela 12, your minimum, reaching a high of 27. If you're out to the capital city, Pretoria, Tswani, this one is for you, 9 and 24. A hazy sunshine for Johannesburg 6, your low, reaching a high of 22 with times of sun and clouds out in Mahigang 8, your minimum, reaching a maximum of 25. It's a rather cloudy day today with a light southeasterly breeze going at 7 k's per hour. That's for Klekstorp, 4, your low, reaching a high of 23 with Kimberley starting off at 7 peaking at 24 degrees today if you're out in Bloemfontein the coolest start to the day too that's your low reaching a high of 22 plenty of sunshine is expected for Richards Bay 17 and 28 with times of sun and clouds for Peter Maritzburg 10 and 26 Durban South Africa's playground 16 and 25 those are your temperatures with a light northwesterly breeze going at 6 k's per hour that's for Mtata 7 that's your low, reaching a high of 27. East London, 12 and 24, with sunshine for Craddock, 3, reaching a high of 28. Port Elizabeth, the friendly city, times of clouds and a bit of sun for you today, 11, reaching a high of 23, with George starting off at 11 and peaking at 22 degrees. It's a mostly sunny day out in Sutherland today, 6 and 21, with the mother city starting off at 9, reaching a high of 22. Sunshine with uh, a light westerly breeze for Wooster, 7, uh, seven kilometres, that's how fast it's going. 10 is your low, reaching a high of 26. And if you're out in Uppington, we got some sun and clouds today. 11, reaching a high of 28. Now, of course, it is the lockdown, but of course, most of you do have the chance to go out and do your exercises on a daily basis, 6 till 9 o'clock. While you're out there, why don't you take a picture for us and send it through to us of your uh, stunning city. Show us what it's looking like in your part of the country and why you love your city so much. Show us the beauty of this South Africa that we call home. That's where we leave it for now. The next update it will be in just over an hour.
Pharmadynamics. Effective, affordable health care. Today's Expresso show will take a special look at the pressures that school learners, especially our matrix, are facing when it comes to tackling education during a global pandemic. This is why our words of inspiration come from Malala Yoshavzai, who rose to global prominence in 2012 when she was shot in the left side of her head after speaking out publicly on behalf of girls and their rights to learn. Yeah, so now the Pakistani, which was then just 15 years old, fought through months of surgery and rehabilitation while becoming a worldwide education activist mm -hmm. and the youngest ever laureate when she be received the Nobel Peace Prize in December 2014. And this is what she had to say. She says, they cannot stop me. I will get my education if it is the home, school or any place. They I cannot stop me. You oh. cannot be stopped. And what touches my heart or is disheartening rather is that there are girls in some regions or countries that are deprived of education, which is a basic need that we all need to acquire. So for her to stand up at such a young age, she was so young, you know, to say, listen, this is not on. I'm going to take it upon myself to fight for everyone else who does not have this kind of platform. So kudos to her. I know that it may be scary, um, a scary time to think about forging forward with normal aspects of life, but do what you can to remain educated during this time. It is possible. But on that feel-good note, it's the 19th of May. If yeah. you're celebrating your birthday today, you are celebrating it with someone special. So keep it locked, okay, to see who it is. And of course, <laughs> later on, we've also got Nicole in the kitchen cooking up something special. It's eggs on toast. We'll see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> Find your smooth fortune with Tropica. Buy a Tropica, follow the entry details on the pack and stand a chance to win your share of 1 million rand in prizes. Such as a trip for two with KLM to Amsterdam. LG G8X cell phones, LG TVs and dishwashers. Guest vouchers, guest watches and accessories. Plus the smooth grand prize of a Suzuki Ignis. The more Tropica you buy, the more chances you have to win. Tropica, nothing Nothing smoother. your feel good breakfast show you hear that you know it's a time of the day where we wish you our loyal and loved viewers a very happy birthday and like kuthle said if you are celebrating today you share this day with the talented british singer sam smith and he turns uh, 28 years old and yep. sam i oh. love his tunes i can't hit those notes unfortunately <laughs> but i can try I'm, I'm gonna let you i'm gonna test you on that but if you don't know his na real name is actually samuel frederick smith and he's one of the most talented artists in our time absolutely now we first fell in love with his honeyed voice when he featured on Disclosure's breakthrough single called The Latch. And ever since then, Sam Smith has been our go-to artist when dealing with heart eggs, alongside Adele, of course. Now, with four Grammy Awards, Sam Smith has made a huge name for himself in a very short period. But, my love, happy birthday. Now, this birthday is your time to, to shine. This is not my time Sam to shine. <laughs> wrote these songs, and uh, Raul de Mornay has decided that he is going to grace us with Dem the singing voice this morning. <laughs> Three, two, one, and go. Definitely not happening this morning, although I love the man. I don't know, do you know any songs of, of, of Sam at all? Can I <laughs> lay by your side <laughs> next to you? Yes, girl, bring it through. I love it.
Robert. Thank you, Sam. And sorry, course, Sam. We are so sorry for all of that. <laughs> of course, we've got you beautiful people celebrating your birthdays today. And we've got a clip sent in here for Amy Gulwa. So let's check it out. Hey, without wasting any time, I'd like to wish my daughter a happy birthday. Oh, Amy Gulwa. May the grace of the Lord shine upon her. Um, I've got nothing in hand, but this is all I can give to you, my child. Know that I love you and I wish you a happy birthday. Um, peace to you, my girl. Oh, that's so beautiful. Without waiting any time, <laughs> get into the dad. Another one comes through for Sky. We would like to give a shout out to our baby girl, Sky uh, Pele, to our precious little girl, a very happy seventh birthday. We pray your day is filled with love and joy, and may God bless you always. And this comes from Morgan Pele too. You're looking so oh cute. Absolutely. That outfit. I absolutely love it. And then Denise is also celebrating, wishing our sister Denise Forbes a blessed 50th birthday on this milestone birthday. We wish you all of the best of health and happiness although we can't be there to celebrate your birthday with you we are there with you in spirit god bless you richly with much love and kisses from the atwell baron and matthews families all the way from port elizabeth and calmore cape winelands from nolene love it oh, happy birthday denise now we got marine who says baie geluk met jou sevende verjaarsdag ons allemaal is baie lief vir jou en baie trots op die persoon wie jy is baie liefde mama papa susie en die rest van die familie happy birthday Hey, Marine. Whoa. And then Molelwa on this day of happiness and joy, I wish my cousin a lifetime full of success. Keep becoming a better woman and knowing that your family absolutely loves you. May all your dreams come true. Happy birthday, Chinese. <laughs> Lol, from your family. Oh, happy birthday to you. Love it. And then last but definitely not least, Yakin. Happy birthday, Yakin, on your fifth birthday. May Allah's richest blessings be upon you. Inshallah, Amin. From your ma, Nazma. I love you too. To the moon and back. We love it, of course, if you'd like to send your loved one a birthday message. How about we switch things up a bit? Why don't you send us a short clip singing the favorite song of the person you are wishing a happy birthday and send us your birthday videos to 071-640-6551 or pop us an email to birthdays at Cordova TV. But if it is your birthday today, happy, happy birthday! birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy birthday indeed. Sending you nothing but love from the kitchen as well. But we're going to have a little bit of fun. Who doesn't like a little bit of brunch, forget brunch, maybe breakfast. Uh, in fact, eggs any time of the day is what I'm saying. We have got with us here a beautiful one pot wonder and it is jammed, packed with that Rhodes quality. We absolutely love a good breakfast and that's exactly what we're going to be making for you. Ready in a few very easy steps. As I said, a one pot wonder and we love that approach. There's no need to fuss about flavor either as the hard work has already been all done on your behalf. So spice up your life with these delicious Rhodes quality spicy eggs and beans on toast. Get out of here, Nicole. Get out. That's <laughs> awesome. I absolutely love it. Thank you. Um, I also like the idea of cooking one pot wonder eggs. It's really mm -hmm. interesting to me um, because I'm quite a traditionalist with my eggs and I often go quite simple. So it's nice to literally spice up your life a little bit with yeah. breakfast or with brunch and do something different. You're getting your protein in there, but you're also getting bag loads of flavor with your, your various additives. So take mm -hmm. me through what's going into our beautiful recipe here. Cool. So we've started off with our onions in our in our pan with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. And then we've got some green peppers. Okay. So this is a very, very nice breakfast. It almost reminds me of a cowboy breakfast, maybe mm. because of the baked beans. So we're just going to brown that I, was off. I did a little little figurative Come on. my hat. How do you do? How do you Hi, ma'am. Okay, so we just let this brown off beautifully. Then we've got a bit of garlic that we've just grated. Okay. Just take your clove, you grate it. Nice and fine. Okay. Yeah, nice and fine. Because you want it to disperse beautifully into your sauce. Okay. So just, also. And, yeah. and not, don't overdo it because this is a, a breakfast meal, and I know we're not coming close enough for people to actually smell <laughs> your breath these days. I think it's perfect it time. <laughs> it will permeate. Actually, maybe there's your gap. Maybe that's that's the the joy of the the social distancing at the moment. Yeah. You can have as garlic much, for breakfast. As just, much garlic as you want. <laughs> And it's also so good for you as well. Okay, Graham, so once this is beautifully browned, we're going to add our Rhodes Quality Bry Relish, which I love about this one, mm. is that people, you, you don't get thrown off by the bry word. Okay. You know, it's still your beautiful classic canned tomato, but with onions and a little bit of herbs. So, yes, you can have it with your bry with a brie or something like that, but also use it as a curry or a base of your Italian pasta sauce. For sure, sauce. I actually use some in a slow-cooked lamb stew. 
Um, absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. No, it is. That's the nice thing about it. Like they, they also have a beautiful Mexican one as well. So mm. when you're making a Mexican chili con carne, you can also add that in there. So you just let this reduce until you get like a beautiful thick sauce. Then we've okay. got their classic baked beans, which I absolutely love. And, and as you can out see, out in the ranch, out in the ranch, we love our. There's <laughs> one step that's been taken away for you is no can openers. Oh, so check it out. Just pop that in. And oh, then... And this is all oh, very saucy as well. Very nice. saucy. Yeah. But that's what you want for your breakfast. That's why we have mm, this beautiful crusty bread. I was going to say, you're going to need some good bread. Dunk it um, in. Um, I will go to the effort of making my own gluten-free bread just so I can have that as a base for this. Definitely. Yeah. You don't even have to have it with bread. You can have it as is and just add a little bit of mushrooms mm. or extra mm. peppers, some zucchini. So once you've get that going, you can't leave out your eggs. Your eggs, OK. And we've got some fresh coriander as well. Let me just pop that in. And then the eggs, you make a little well, which I'm going to make what, over here. What do we call it? Is it a shuk shuka? Is that shuk shuka. Shuk shuka. Yes. Which so is quite made in a similar way. I know it's, it's got very a very different flavour profile with the, the spices that go into, into that. But Yeah, it's a more um, classic tomato base and it doesn't really have beans in. Mm. So we're just bulking it up, making it more um, protein based. There we go. So we just crack our eggs in. That is your breakfast element. And then what? you're going to add mozzarella cheese. Oh, of course. I actually, yeah. when I dished this up earlier, the cheese was just like just stringing, stringing <laughs> up. It was so beautiful. Um, so we're just going to pop this on. Oh, yum. And then you're going to leave this to reduce until your eggs is cooked to your liking and the cheese is nicely melted in here. I'm just going to add it. I suppose it. that's a great way of thickening the sauce. It all kind of happens together in that same um, process. Exactly. So don't forget wow. your salt and pepper. And you know what's nice about this as well? If you want more of a curry base, they also have like a chakalaka. You can add the chakalaka and the beans in there. Or you can add the tomato and the chakalaka and miss the beans. So it's, yeah. No, it's, you do that at home. Experiment with, yeah, with experiment. all three options. Go with the Mexican, go with the chakalaka, go with your, yeah. your standard bry relish. Um, I must say, I love those, the, the bry relish on hot dogs. I know like people, you know, yeah. love a traditional bori roll, but for me now with a bit of grated cheese on a hot dog with that bry relish, it's just Ooh. absolutely delicious. Yeah, that sounds that great. That looks amazing. And I, I would recommend, actually, I like the French loaf with it because you can then soak up the extra sauce mm -hmm. um, find this recipe on expressoshow.com along with all of our recipes and fitness inspiration but that's where you can go and get this beautiful Rhodes quality um, eggs and very spicy sauce this morning mm. Rhodes quality for the love of food
that every single aspect of the lives that we are accustomed to has been disrupted by the COVID-19 crisis. A particular group that is feeling the uncertainty brought by this pandemic are matriculants who are tasked with getting a matric certificate and either being accepted for tertiary studies or forging a path to independence. This is, of course, a quite a daunting task. And uh, we are being joined this morning by industrial psychologist and management and leadership program developer for South African College of Applied Psychology, Ashley Modine, to take us through what COVID-19 means for matric learners and their parents. A very good morning to you, Ashley. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Morning, Richard. Thank you very much for having me on your show today. What are some of the mental hardships that learners are facing as they navigate, you know, education during a global pandemic like this one? Mm. One of the things that we are noting is just how the new normal is so overwhelming, uh, be it the, the feelings that we are feeling or even just anxieties and fears and a lot of uncertainty that goes with life in lockdown or even just uh, trying to make sense of your studies uh, during a global pandemic. How do you actually study uh, at a time such as this? Exactly. Now, with Matrix being part of Generation Z, who have grown up using technology, does this put them at an advantage when it comes to adapting to online learning? Yes, that definitely is a, a plus for um, our current learners and students. So we are finding that with your Gen Z students, a lot of the time, social media is a part of the life. It's mm. a part of uh, connecting with the world and making sense of the world. Um, and even things like online learning or being able to connect uh, with others digitally or even source information needed uh, to either increase knowledge or gain a new skill, they are definitely the generation that can uh, navigate that world a little bit better than most generations. I mean, this entire lockdown process or period has been quite discouraging for many students all over the world. But what can matriculants do to find the motivation to focus on completing the year and furthering education and their lives amidst all the scary news, the stress and the uncertainty? Mm, that's uh, quite a valid question there. So firstly, I think it would be a case of identifying which parts of their career needs the most focus. And I mentioned the word career because ultimately career is not what would happen once they matriculate or once they finish. They are in the middle of their career and there's a transition happening in the space as well. So what is it that you as a learner right now would be needing? Is it uh, to focus on uh, either some of the subjects that are really, really tough for you to wrap your head around, even more so without the support let's say, of an educator? Or could it be a case of not letting your dreams float away so in a sense if you are already uh, planning and thinking of what the next move would be uh, whether it's further study um, at a university or college or whether it's starting a business uh, already start to think about that and what can you do we've seen the likes of online open days for example uh, featuring so it really is a, a case of planning uh, what at least just the next month or two uh, needs to entail what do you need to do because you can't necessarily plan for the whole year when we don't even have certainty about where things are going so I would just say start planning already and putting uh, some of those plans in place for yourself in your career. So hold on to your dreams and your aspirations and put in practical okay. steps to achieve them but let's not say for the rest of the year for now for the next month or two months I like yeah. that but parents are also faced with a daunting time of reassuring their children that they will prosper through the crisis mm -hmm. what tips do you perhaps have for parents on how they can manage their academic responsibilities and mental health. Yeah, so you do find that the whole family system or the whole support structure does actually feel the pressure of what's happening. And uh, a guidance that I would have for uh, parents or any caregiver really would be to take a step back uh, as much as they are maybe wanting to uh, make sure that studying is actually happening uh, or make sure that uh, their child is uh, progressing and there's some sort of you know formal learning that's happening. But take a step back and recognize what feelings you are also uh, struggling with. You know, so what uncertainties do you have? Because um, as much as you might be worried even about your own child, but they also just need the space to process their own emotions as learners um, and just understand and reflect on what it is that they're feeling. So take a step back while still being available and still inquiring. It doesn't need to be daily, even if it's a few times a week and also not when the books are now in front of your learner or your child. Uh, in whatever other activity that you might actually find invigorating or uh, 
um, in that you enjoy doing together just to find out how they are doing um, outside of just what school is requiring them to do or what grade 12 pressures require of them. So take interest in things that they enjoy engaging in or engaging with. Um, earlier on, we touched on the fact that, you know, the current matriculants are part of Gen Z and they are equipped with technological innovations and platforms, you know, to start learning, etc. But the reality is that uh, we are not equally equipped, you know, to face the unique challenges brought on by COVID-19. What can matrix do if they have limited or no access to digital education? And that's such a real problem, uh, especially in our country currently where we know that there is that imbalance of not everyone being able to uh, continue with online learning as much as there might be that um, aspiration from all parties involved trying to make sure it happens. So uh, for a learner finding them in that situation, um, I would really advise them to, uh, firstly, yes, make your textbook your friend. Um, and it might not necessarily be the only source of learning about something that you have. So get creative as well. Uh, we are are seeing uh, the lights of um industry trends and industry activities so whichever subject you are even tackling have a look at how even from that perspective of that subject how is COVID being responded to during this time that you can get from news, from social media, from different places, but the likes of YouTube as well. If you have the facilities or means to be able to engage in things like that, that enable you to uh, enrich your learning without an educator or even any of the shows that would be available on the SABC side uh, for learners um, as support during this time that are very subject specific, I think that really is uh, the best to break it down and uh, do what you can with what you have and right now, it might just be a textbook. Yes, it's not on a digital platform, but it can still um, help you to progress and cover the material um, on your own or form a study group even, uh, whether it's a WhatsApp study group where you just check in or an SMS study group uh, just to check in and see where everyone is on what they're committed to do uh, or cover and learn that week. That can also be quite helpful. Do what you can Do with what you, what you have. That is very sound advice, especially for people who have limitations with regarding um, to accessing online learning. Thank you so much, Ashley Modina from SACAB, for joining us this morning, you know, to shed a little bit of light and insight on what matriculants and learners are going through amidst this global pandemic. I hope that you have a fantastic morning further. Thank you. We hope that her advice has been able to give you the strategies you need to conquer the rest of the year and your life. Good luck, matriculants. Oh, thank you very much there, Ashley Motene and Kuthe. If you think about it, Jamie Lee, being in matric is particularly very stressful mm. around these times where you have to be preparing for all those exams and the amount of work that you have to get Absolutely. through. Now, think about having to do all of that during this time where uh, you are unaided, you are doing all of this from home, and if you are under-resourced, even worse, hey? Absolutely. Yeah. Now, turning from matric learners can cope, um, coping with the stress of the current pandemic, we now turn to a teacher whose song of hope for getting through COVID-19 has gone viral on social media. Let's take a look. As much of the world continues on in isolation, people working from home, they're trying to figure out things to do with their family, uh, things to figure out how to pass the time. Yeah. Lindsay and Kels, a lot of teachers have been going online and coaches trying to, trying to help out their students and, and their athletes. Um, this one teacher in particular, music teacher, I thought was phenomenal. Not only did she pick up an instrument and decide to help out her student and spread some joy, but she wrote a song and as inspiration, she was going to share what she's been going through and how it makes her feel sure. while she is in isolation. Have a look. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. <laughs> okay, I, I didn't expect that, but I thought, okay, what song could she possibly sing to help kids get through the pandemic? I'm keen to hear. And I was waiting for something soothing. Absolutely. <laughs> that works. Yeah, it, do, it does really work. But you know what? She had the strums <laughs> down. I was thinking, OK, sing us some Sam Smith. Or she's going to get us with vocals. And then she started screaming. And I was like, do you know what? I would have done the same uh, if I was a teacher. <laughs> think about this. How many times have you heard me 
on this very studio floor, just walking around from <gasps> end to end, just going, ah! Ah! in song and in a nice harmony. I mean, I think it's a nice harmony. I wouldn't say it's a nice harmony, and I also wouldn't say that it's soothing for anyone else. It's soothing it's for not. your inner, my inner peace. Hey, no? I'm so glad that you're a t you're not a teacher and you're presenting. Come on, guys, think about it. Ah! ah, come on. No? Ah, OK. Well, listen. OK, if this is not helping and not working out, hopefully a bit of fitness to get the blood flowing might do you just the amount of good you're looking for because Graham is on standby with uh, Ralph working on their backs. <laughs> Welcome back at your Feel Good Breakfast Show. And if you're seeing me in the office over here, you know what's about to go down. And now most of us have suffered from some form of back pain in our lives. And a back injury can occur for a number of reasons, including falling, an accident, and even just lifting something in an incorrect <laughs> manner. Now, um, hurting your back, obviously, in any way, can keep you out of the gym for a long time. And I know some injuries might even lead to lifelong problems. And Graham, you've mentioned uh, earlier... Three months, Ra. Three, Three months, months buddy. I, um, I know you can relate so I find a huge amount of comfort in, in having this conversation with you but I think hopefully you guys know at home that we are, are completely honest and open about ourselves and our own personal journey so I've probably found myself at the weakest state I've been in my adult life like I've disconnected from my body I injured my my a disc in my back picking something up during the move believe it or not just a innocuous picking up a box and that now knock-on effect is affecting my sciatic nerve um, and they've deduced now that it's obviously either um, an injury a pronated disc um, maybe a disc that's bulging um, you can tell by the injuries around that area but the the long and the, the, the short of it is that I can't do anything but if I don't do anything it's 10 times exactly worse. that exactly that and it's such a good point I think the most important part is that we need to continually focus on keeping movement and keeping active the minute that we rest our bodies we kind of go into the safety mechanism and our body completely guards itself and then everything spasms so especially yeah. something when it comes to the spine you need to understand we have these lumber that are stacked on top of each other and if we don't actually possess the strength to support that column the muscles either spasm or those discs get so weak that those lumber almost try to sit on 
on each other. And what we're gonna do today is strengthen that specific region to alleviate the pain that's being associated with those lumbar pushing on those discs. So anybody at home that is circling, struggling, or having an issue with a low back problem, you need to continually strengthen the entire region to alleviate that pain. And that's what we're gonna be doing this morning. I love it, man. Well, let's get started. You ready? I love the fact that every time I've, I've spoken about it on set, I mean, cameramen have experienced issues. My, my manager's like, oh, how's your sciatic nerve? I had a sciatic nerve issue for like a year. <laughs> so many people can relate. So All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna well. start at the very beginning, the very basics for anybody that is coming from a dramatic injury that's kind of starting from scratch. It's important to get back to using your body correctly and efficiently. So number one, we need to focus on how to actually sit, how to stand, how to pick things up off of the floor correctly sure. without compromising our back once again. So a simple exercise to do, and anybody at home can try the same thing, is just a basic sit to stand. And what we want to focus on is actually keeping our spine neutral. So we don't want to use leverage to first move our back forward and then stand up because then we again compressing that sp that that disc and causing a potential issue so you want to stay neutral use your legs quite dramatically when it comes to lifting and picking up so open up your hips when you are standing and now instead of leaning forward you want to literally shoot your body straight up by supporting those glutes so have your hands in front of you to counterweight and you're literally just standing staying neutral and then coming and controlling it back down now, especially on the way back down you don't just drop straight back down a lot of the time when we're lazy and we rush back home and we're tired yeah. oh just sit down <laughs> and that drawing and that impact and it's is amazing like just a misstep can, exactly can send that. that so this yeah. is exactly that cream so this is something to practice continually at home is a basic sit and then a controlled uh, sit down once again back on your chair. And the same thing can be said for when we're picking something up. And I've used a broomstick here, and it's a great example for anyone trying to know what is a neutral spine. You're continually mentioning it. Yeah. So a great example is you take the broomstick and you just put it behind you. And you want to maintain contact on your head, on the mid region of your spine, as well as the tailbone. And maintaining this posture throughout picking something up while I'm doing something where I need to pick up a toy, walking just around the house, that, that you want to use this as your shot. guide to keep that level playing like field. When Lindsay taught me to dance, you put one of these down. <laughs> <laughs> back well, there's my back there's, there's some back. good multi-purpose there, so that's brilliant. And especially with that being said, picking something up, you don't want to lean over to the side because, again, you're going to aggravate that disc. So sure. maintain a neutral spine and you're coming down into the lunge to pick it up. Brilliant. But we're going to get more excited about the exercises now <laughs> and we're going to move a step further. So if you're into the second month, maybe, of your rehab, you want to be able to still work your core, support those muscles. So we're going to get down into a prone position. Okay. And this is a very, it's called a quad drooped position where we're supporting our lower back with the weight of our knees okay. as well as our hands. Now, this is not going to make us very vulnerable to actually harming or causing more pain in the lower back. So normally you'd be in a bridge position, sure. but this is causing too much strain. Sure. So this is a modified version of how we can work our core without aggravating our lower back. Lower so back, at home, please. you guys try this one. All you're simply doing is lifting your knees off the ground and keeping that neutral spine. And this is your first level of how you can sure. work the core. And it really is baby steps, dude. You've got Literally to. Literally eh? that. And now the beautiful part of being in this position is you don't want to aggravate your back any further. What you can do is grab a dumbbell or like I've got one of my equipment hacks as a can, <laughs> right? Sure. And then all you do at home, now you have the option of working your entire upper body. So in the quadruple position, if I take my dumbbell and bring it straight up to the side behind my back, I'm working my lats, right? So Completely, now we're working the yeah. back. All right, then you take the same weight and you bring it with a straight arm behind you. Now you're working your triceps, all right, in that rep. Turn the weight around and you literally bring it up towards your head. You work in the biceps. Amazing, without right? any of those stabilizers kicking in or having to exactly. you know, do the But work. we're yeah. still working the core the perfectly. Core. You're still getting a stimulation. And then you can start working your shoulders by bringing the weight through to the side. And you can repeat this motion almost in like 360 degrees. So bring it up in front of you and that will complete the full upper body spec. And then once again, bringing it back, you work your lat, lat. then we go tricep, then we go bicep. Now we're going for a shoulder to the side and then basically hit that shoulder straight in front of you once again. Oh, that's brilliant. As simple as that, Graham. You're in a very protected position. That's a position. full gym workout. <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are safe, you're secure, your back isn't going to be compromised or maybe any more vulnerable than it needs to be, and yet you can still work around by getting the stimulation for your entire upper body as well as the core that is not going to be compromised by that injury. And, and you would know mentally that's the, the toughest part is coming back. I mean, you're a professional athlete, so it gives me a lot of hope that you've been able to come from that kind of injury, a torn disc, to be able to get back to, to where you are now. And it's awesome. just that daily consistency that you need to constantly have within you and enjoy the process as well, guys. Love it. Trust the process. All right. Well, we'll see you guys later. Enjoy. <laughs>
That is the perfect exercise for Graham, especially considering that he's been under lockdown for a lockdown. G, are you holding up very well? Ooh. Have you broken a sweat or anything? Are you intact? Look at that, look at that. <laughs> I haven't moved like that in ages, man. I love it, I love it so much. Now, Eid is around the corner and there may be fewer faces around, you know, the table this year, but that doesn't mean it can still, it can't still be a special and delicious day. Treat your family to Chef Claim's scrumptious sweet chili prawn served on a bed of garlicky lemon and herb rice. It's a quick and easy lunch dish that can be ready in under 13 minutes. Chef Clem, I was struggling to speak for a second because my mouth is watering from the aroma coming from this plate. I smell butter, I smell lemon, I smell garlic. It's I smell just, happiness. It's not just you, it's all these camera people <laughs> over here. All of them. They're watching us. This is so easy to make, and the reason mm -hmm. I'm making this is because if it wasn't for lockdown, Meg, my fiance and I were actually gonna spend Eid at our show producer, Lena's house. Really? And I was gonna make this dish and the second dish you're gonna see a lot later, but because of lockdown, we're mm. not gonna be with Lena, mm. so making this today, because you know, I've gotta like, just, I, I, I amp myself up for this dish. And hopefully Lena can take down some notes so that she could make it herself, yeah. and perhaps you can have a virtual dinner. <gasps> You know what I mean? That's a Guys, very good. Guys, that's the eat plan. <laughs> okay, so you want to get started on this? Yes, please. So we're going to get started on our lemony herb rice, which is so complicated because I need to make the rice from scratch. I need to get the peas ready. I need to get the corn. I need to fry onions, all that stuff for the rice. What do you mean when we already have the savory rice? <gasps> it's already ready? done for us. How amazing is that? I was saying earlier on to Clem that this is so crazy because it's literally a shortcut but it also maintains the same nutrients, yeah. the same flavor and everything. It's legit. Mm. It's amazing. Mm. It's like, I, I don't understand. It's as if they tapped into my mind and I'm like, I wish there was an easy way to prepare rice in like minutes. And mm. then they're like, done. Say less. This is it. This is it. So what I'm doing wow. is, let's start off with our garlic and our garlic. I love garlic. Okay, lots of garlic What's... going in. And then I'm going with some ginger. No, I'm going to keep the ginger for the prawns. I want to, actually, you know what? A little bit of ginger. I want to add as much flavor to this rice. I mean, it's already amazing. I just mm. want to make it like times 10, Are which is so easy. Are we frying the rice now? I'm frying the rice. Okay. So, you know the whole thing about fried rice? You know, that you, you amp the flavor, you amp the texture. Because this rice is already made for you, it's the perfect texture already just to accept mm. all the flavors from the garlic and the ginger and that oil. It's yes. going to be so good. Okay, so that's happening. I'm adding a lot of chili to this dish, but I know you can handle it. Oh, of course, 100%. Originally, I wasn't going to add chili to the rice. How the come? recipe because it got a lot of chili in the garlic okay, in, in, in the see. prawns but you know what we we can handle it cat's not here today i know he can't <laughs> handle the chili no we, we love some chili. we love chili okay so garlic ginger chili in our pan and that's with a bit of oil mm -hmm. and you don't want to have your oil too hot you don't want to burn it you want okay. to have it on a medium heat so you can kind of like infuse the oil with mm. the flavors very very important if it's and too, what's in the rice cream we've got petit pois petit pois you must say pois Pois. Baby peas, basically. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's fancy. Okay, we being all fancy smancy. Okay, and then we've got corn. Corn. And we've got fried onions. Mm. Not just onions, it's fried, fried onions. onions. Already fried for you because you, the, the tears. Of, it's you done. save yourself from crying. Did you know you could actually buy frozen chopped onions already? No, to from be honest with you. But to be fair, I'm a very like traditional person when it comes to the kitchen. For savory rice, I would make it from scratch. Would you? Using my peppers, uh -huh. you know, your peas, uh -huh. your corn, etc. But obviously now you None. have converted me. You can still fry off your peppers. You can still add all those elements that you like to when you make your savory rice at home. Mm. And you just add the rice to it. Oh, wow. It's, it's that easy. So you're going to fry the rice now. Okay. It's already so amazing. The smells are insane. So, so delicious. I'm not even kidding. That's just the rice. That's what? just the rice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add some coriander to that. All right. Then we're going to add some mint. Mint, which is quite strange. Why would you add mint to this? To rice. Yeah, right? But because we've got that savory sweet notes coming and the garlic and the chili coming from the prawns, mm -hmm. that mint just has a magical way of like cooling everything down and balancing everything. Oh, wow. It's not so just it any doesn't mint. overpower. Yeah, it's not just any mint. What mint is it's it? It's clear mint. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you, there's no did cheese you get in this your recipe. Clear mint there's, from there's, Claremont. Yeah, there's no, there's no cheese in this <laughs> recipe. I'm bringing the cheese. Okay, 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 okay. Fry off your rice just like that. That's looking so good, smelling amazing. Smells then in delicious. this pan, mm -hmm. we're going to start off with our prawns. So let's get that heat up nice and high. Oh, we're cooking the prawns on high temperature. Yeah, yeah, because you want to kind of like lock in the flavors immediately. Mm. So what you're going to do in, garlic, ginger in. I need more chili. Here's a cool tip. If you don't want to add so much heat mm. of the chili, but you like the flavor of chili, because chili has a citrus note in it. Mm. So what you do, instead of chopping it really fine, just split it down the middle. 
Then you get like that mild heat and you get the nice flavor of the chili. There we go. Are you, Professor Adams, I love with the wow. spread. So you're like. I'm taking down notes, Chef Glenn. There we go. Then we've got our responsibly sourced prawns. And these have been like far cooked and they're shelled already. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add them to, I'm gonna just cut it open like this. I'm gonna add this to our beautiful garlic and ginger right now. And it's gonna start toasting and frying up immediately. Is, you, is our rice not burning over there? No. Okay. And if it was, it's fine. No, it's not. It's good. Okay. It's beautiful. Okay. It's doing everything it's supposed to do. Now we're going to go with a bit of salt, a bit of pepper. The Some rice is taste. done, guys. The rice is done. Already done. It's done. So I'm going to turn the heat off on the rice. Cool. Our prawns are... Yeah? Wow. And you're going to see, they start turning opaque so quickly. All you got to do is give it a little toss. You can okay. Kids, don't try that right? at home, okay? That takes years of experience and practice. Yes. <laughs> you go to special school just to learn the flip. Just the to rest. learn the flip. Yeah. <laughs> butter, butter because butter and prawns and garlic. Same WhatsApp group. They were, they were raised together. They were like, you know, it's insane. They uh, are beautiful. And yeah. of course the lemon. A little the lemon. Bit. Little yeah. lemons. What I'm going to do is a little bit of lemon goes into our garlic and prawns. It's going to be delicious. Mm. And then a little bit in the rice as well. And then to finish off our lemony herb rice, I'm actually going to add the juice of the lemon. But you want to add that at the end. You don't want to add it in the beginning. How come? So that you want to maintain that, still in there. that fresh flavor of the lemon. If you add it too soon, it's going to cook away. Okay. So don't do that. Okay. Rice done now. Garlic is garlic prawns doing its thing. Get that heat up again. You can see how fast is they turn opaque. So quickly. So quickly. When that starts happening, you add your sweet chili sauce. Because sweet mm. chili prawns, you got to sweet chili. But you know what? Here comes my absolute hack. We used to have a briar relish that has the onion and tomato mix mm. with extra sweet chili in it. If you make a poiki at home and you use this... It brings everything together. Brings more than the boys to the yard. It brings <laughs> It's so better much, than the milkshake. It's better than the milkshake. <laughs> it's magic, I kid you not. So what you're going to do now is you're going to let this all come together. Mm -hmm. You're going to let that sauce reduce. And remember, the sauce is the magic. It actually helps us prawns like yes. really kick to another, another level. Oh, guys, it's honestly smelling so good. Let's see, what have we left out? A little bit of extra herbage, why not? A little because bit of we the, can. the mint we can. The butter actually thickens that sauce nicely mm. as well. So don't be shy with the butter. It's mm. eat. Depending on your how, what kind of consistency you want to achieve yeah. with the sauce. Exactly. Chef Clem, that was literally under 10 minutes exactly. and we're here. That's gonna reduce slightly. The rice is done. You plate it up on your dish, a little bit of coriander at the top, maybe a little extra chili on the top, mm. maybe a little bit of lemon. Eat is done, my friends. Just like that. Okay, just like that, in under 10 minutes, we have successfully, okay, yeah. not, it's not cooked yet, but you know what I'm yeah. trying to say. If you missed out on this awesome recipe, make sure to visit our website, expressoshow.com. You know what this meal is making me think of, and the fact that people can't, you know, be together um, during uh -huh. Eid, is Vusi Nova's song, As Pele Langa, meaning Sing we are not people. enough. Sing it to people.
still with your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is Expresso right here on SABC3 at the start of a brand new week. Thank you so much for starting with us. Now, social distancing is still ongoing, but it has also provided unique opportunities for people to collaborate at a level never before imaginable. A musical artist who believes in cultivating talent as much as possible is Afro-pop sensation Vusi Nova, whose latest single, Noma Temba, called upon gifted South Africans to sing the chorus and be featured on the track. Take a look at this. Nova. Ah, what a beautiful and stirring melody. Honestly, I love that. Well, what was the inspiration so behind the song Noma Temba and what's the deeper meaning there? So, I mean, I guess um, it was very much inspired by love. Um, and I guess the experiences and the lessons that we learned from that. You know, um, so Noma Temba is basically um, about this girl that you've got a crush on. Um, but you're afraid to approach, you know, and I think, I think every single guy out there at some point of his life has sort of experienced that. I'm sure you have as well, right? Not me, Vusi, not me, where, but where, many guys are out there. You have a I, I am sure they relate. <laughs> yes, me too, Vusi, yes. <laughs> Uh, but what a beautiful project. I mean, I think, you know, when I heard about this, I thought what an amazing way to approach this. Uh, but why did you decide to involve your fans in this song? Well, I mean, I think COVID-19, you know, the coronavirus, because at the end of the day, we are in lockdown, you know, and I think in a way, it's also sort of made us think outside the box, you know? Um, and so I thought, how about I just go on, on social media, Instagram, Twitter, and just ask people to send VNs, um, video clips of themselves harmonizing to the chorus. And yeah, it's, the response was just insane, man. Like we've got literally thousands and thousands of voice notes of video clips. Um, yeah, it's been it's been crazy. It's been crazy, and that's part of the reason why I haven't been sleeping. Yeah, what is one of the things that uh, sort of stood out for you with all the submissions that have come through? What's the one thing that is so similar about everyone sending uh, all of their voice notes through? You know, for me, I think I think more than anything else, the unity, you know, that people are showing. You know, and I think that's another thing that COVID nineteen has done. You know. Um, we're more unified right now, which is beautiful to see. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this project in this unity that comes out, thousands of submissions, and I'm sitting and thinking, well, it's no wonder you're up at four o'clock and only getting two and a half hours sleep because you now have to edit all of this. You have to edit the song, but also have to work on the video at the same time. How did you even manage to do this? So if you, so if you think about it, we've got, as, I was, as I was saying earlier on, we've got thousands of voice notes. So we had to literally sit there, um, and these are from cell phones. So we had to sit there, choose a couple. At the end, we ended up putting 800 voices wow. on that chorus. So imagine having to mix together 800 different voices. I mean, it was insane. Um, but for me, I sort of had fun with it, you know, because I think at the end of the day, moving forward, this is how we're going to start doing things, you know. Life as we know it is, 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 is not normal. And we have to embrace the fact that things are changing and times indeed are changing as well. Uh, but a part of the proceeds, and I think this is a fantastic story to share, part of the proceeds will be donated to helping COVID-19 victims with regards to, right. you know, necessities during this time. Please tell us more about this. Well, I mean, I think... Um, the coronavirus, once again, has just sort of affected us very negatively, you know. I mean, there's people losing jobs. Yeah. Um, people don't have food right now. Like, it's, it's crazy. So I thought, how about I do my bit 
and take a certain portion from the song and then and 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 take it towards that um yeah Vusi, there's something about your music and a lot of your songs really leave us with a key take out and a key message uh, that sort of drives us uh, as your fans. Uh, what is the message that you're hoping to share through, number one, this beautiful song, but I think also just the fact that you've been able to do the song in the way that you've done it. What's the message here? I think, you know, for so long, you know, uh, there's always been a problem um, when it comes to Tina as Abandu, you know, and once again, as I said before, people are showing unity right now. And I guess once again with this song, that is exactly what I want to put out there and, and just once again spread love, you know. I love it. You know what, Vusi, uh, after this conversation, I hope that Noma Temba is sitting and watching somewhere out there. Noma Temba, I mean, hear this man out. He's gotten 800 people together just to, to try and get your attention. Just 801 people Please, to Noma try Temba. and get a response from you, Noma Temba. Say yes, say yes. <laughs> but thank you so much for chatting to us this morning, Vusi. Uh, have a fantastic time and all the best with the music, all right? Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, our thanks to Vusi uh, Nova for sharing the vision behind this amazing project with the nation. Of course, we salute you all the way and all of you out there who have used your talents to unite uh, with Vusi in this way, but unite South Africans uh, to face these difficult times together. Thank you so much, Debbie. So let's delve back into our news headlines just gone at the top of the hour. Let's start here in South Africa. Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu has joined 87 other Nobel Peace Laureates and world leaders to call on governments around the world to prioritize children in their response to the COVID-19 pandemic. He says the coronavirus has exposed and worsened global inequalities and children are among those worst affected. Earlier yesterday, President Cyril Ramaphosa also called for global solidarity to fight the coronavirus crisis. He was addressing the 73rd session of the World Health Assembly, which is the key decision-making body of the World Health Organization. And staying in South Africa, Hawks officers have seized cocaine worth over 30 million rand headed for the Western Cape. This is now the second significant drug bust the Hawks have made in less than a week, just days after seizing ecstasy powder worth an estimated 6.3 million rand in Cape Town. They intercepted a haul of cocaine worth more than 30.4 million rand at a fuel station near Cape Town. 37-year-old man who had allegedly gone to the garage to pick up the drugs was arrested and he'll appear in court later today. In a little further afield, more than 100 nations have expressed support for an independent inquiry into the global response to the coronavirus pandemic. So a draft resolution is being prepared for a meeting of the World Health Assembly, part of the United Nations, due to take place next week. The text of that resolution calls for an impartial, independent and comprehensive evaluation of the international health response to COVID-19. Very interesting. Now China has objected to the motion, saying Monday was too early to begin such an investigation. Investigation. Then American actor Leonardo DiCaprio has joined a campaign to support Africa's oldest nature reserve and World Heritage Site after it came under a deadly attack last month when 12 rangers were killed by rebel groups. Virunga National Park in the Democratic Republic of Congo, known for its endangered mountain gorilla population, yesterday launched the Virunga Fund as it was facing a series of unprecedented threats. The park said money raised would provide urgent support for staff on the ground to deliver critical disease prevention efforts, law enforcement and protect the one of our most endangered species in fact. And there's the benefit of fresh fruits and vegetables. The advantage of nurturing a vegetable patch at home during these days of worldwide lockdown uh, does not only keep your pantry stocked, but also greatly enhances your general well-being. Researchers at one of America's top Ivy League universities, Princeton, have just released a study stating that the level of happiness reported while gardening was similar to that experienced while biking, walking or dining out. Remember what that was like. And whether people gardened alone or with company, made no difference. People who kept vegetable gardens, though, reported a higher level of average emotional well-being than people who worked in ornamental gardens. And the article published in the journal Landscape and Urban Planning states that gardening will reinforce overall healthy behavior as it promotes physical activity, supports emotional well-being, and the health benefits of consuming freshly grown fruits and vegetables daily are also um, quite ample. So get digging in the dirt and plant something this week. Plant something today as being physically and mentally healthy is probably our best defense in the fight against corona. 
then turning our gaze lastly to the world of entertainment again it seems the world will have to wait a little longer for relative newlyweds actress uh, sophie turner of course star of game of thrones and musician joe jonas to confirm that they are expecting their first child together while well, the news has been circulating since february the couple have decidedly kept mum while sophie has uh, been sporting looser fitting styles when out and about a couple of photos of the couple going about their business from the last few weeks however definitely indicates that they are expecting and during a recent interview joe opened up about how quarantine has been for the pair saying we got married last year so we're new to this but we appreciate and we know that time for ourselves is important so i'll do my thing she does her thing even though we're all under one roof i think that's been helpful for us we wish the happy couple a healthy pregnancy during these uh, strange times of uh, quarantine. That's where we leave our news today. Let's take one last look at the weather. Thank you so much, Lee. Time to look uh, one more time at the weather temperatures. But first, we've asked you to send in your sunrise pictures this morning. Elaine Acupido wishes us a good morning with this breathtaking sunrise picture of a beautiful sky and beautiful shades of pink from Ocean View in the Mother City. Now, Cape Town can expect hazy sunshine today with a high of 22 degrees. Another one came through from Henry Besson, who sent through this beautiful sunrise picture, showing off a gorgeous golden sunrise through the clouds in East London. Now, East London can expect some sun and clouds today with a gentle northeasterly breeze of 13 kilometers per hour reaching a maximum temperature of 24 degrees. Thank you to both Elaine and Henry for sending in your sunrise pictures. We absolutely love them and we hope that you have a fantastic Tuesday. Now it will be another fine and cool day for most parts of the country starting off with Polokwane. Mostly sunny conditions can be expected ranging from 8 to 24 degrees. Umbumbela 12 27 and then partly sunny conditions can also be found in Pretoria with a low of 9 and a high of 24. Johannesburg 622 and then sun through some high clouds for you Mahi Keng with a low of 8 peaking at 25. Klerksdorp 423 and then a light northerly breeze of 7 kilometers per hour expected for you Kimberley with a low of 7 peaking at 24. Now the coolest start of the day can be found in Bloemfontein ranging from 2 to 22 degrees. Richards Bay 17 at 28 and then sun followed by some clouds for you, Peter Madsburg, ranging from 10 to 26 degrees. Mainly cloudy conditions can be expected for South Africa's playground at Durban today, ranging from 16 to 25. I'm tired for you at a 7 to 27. And then a gentle northeasterly breeze of 13 kilometers per hour expected for East London with a low of 12, peaking at a 24 degrees. Sunshine can also be found in Craddock today, ranging from 3 to 28 degrees. Port Elizabeth. 11 at 23 and then sun with patchy clouds for you George today uh, ranging from 11 to 22 as well Sutherland 621 hazy sunshine expected for the mother city Cape Town with a low of 9 and a high of 22 Worcester 10 at 26 and then sun and some clouds for you Uppington ranging from 11 to 28 now being on lockdown does not mean we can't get to see this beautiful country that we live in so send us a picture or video of your town and we could show it live on the show make sure Sure to include a picture of yourself and why you love your town so much uh, but of course it is Tuesday and it's Tropica Tuesdays and we are catching up with team Mango Peach ahead of the show tonight stay tuned so I'm chatting to Umalume Mosa here he's owned a small clothing factory for years now and he's always inspired me with his success. But like a lot of businesses, this lockdown's hit him hard. So he spoke to his banker and they've put together a tailor-made relief solution for him to help his business and his people get through this. Making your bank your business partner, that's a habit worth keeping.
Clover Crush. 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush your daily goodness. Now also available in long life. Made with love by Clover. It's my feel good birthday show. It's Tuesday and you know what it means. It's Tropica Tuesday. And if you've been following Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao this season, you know that things are getting tougher and tougher by the minute. With one more elimination on the cards, the three remaining teams are on a mission to secure themselves a place in that finale. Now, one of the teams competing for their share of smooth fame and fortune is a duo made up from two very fine brothers, everybody. The one is a well-known TV presenter and the other a marketing expert in the making. Of course, I'm talking about the boys from Team Mango Peach, Vaz and Darren Solomon. Welcome back, both of you. <laughs> Woo! Did you, Feeling blessed. Did you see the CV there? Fine brothers coming to us, gracing us with their presence this morning. I mean, for both of you, Vazi and Darren, we've all been bound to stay home and stay safe during this period. How has the national lockdown affected uh, your daily routines? Oh, jeez. I, I think it's been uh, pretty good on my side. I've got a pretty cool routine. Wake up early in the morning, have a good breakfast. <laughs> Watch espresso <laughs> as well. And then I just basically uh, do my assignments throughout the day. And uh, yeah, then I just chill throughout uh, the rest of the day in the evening. Love it. And of course, watch Expresso every single morning. But what about you, Vazi? I think I can stick to a routine now. Um, I've always had a problem sticking to routines. And uh, lockdown literally got me doing the same thing over and over and over again. But in a positive way. So yeah. Guess I've learned something new. Consistency is key. Vazi, I know you are also in the entertainment industry yourself. How has the COVID-19 pandemic affected your career and how do you still change your approach to still be relevant during these times? Um, we've really taken a knock as the entertainment industry. I um, won't die. I mean, jobs are not getting in as much as uh, they used to. We started cur um, curating content online. Um, we started talking to brands online about uh, getting certain um, campaigns online and stuff. So so I think that's what uh, I've been personally focusing on and uh, I've been doing quite well on it, so yeah, I'm quite happy. Still securing the bag. Darren, for you being a student, you know, how has that affected your, uh, your studies? <laughs> Um, as you've known, like everything has been moved to online learning, online classes, lectures and that. So uh, the only real difference is the online sort of um, method that they've used. The lecturers actually do just send us the, the work material at the end of the sort of uh, class. But not having the actual lecture there for uh, personal questions is a bit tricky. Mm. I love that you both are so positive about the situation that you're currently in. And we, we know that you love work working out and staying fit. How are you guys keeping a healthy lifestyle during these times as well? <laughs> uh, you know, us, uh, both us and I, I'm sure we always have to try to keep fit, not just for ourselves, but, uh, you know, for Ooh. our career paths as well. <laughs> oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, so staying healthy is part of, uh, part of my lifestyle, you know. Uh, waking up fresh early in the morning, getting the workout done so I can get out the way and I can be super, super happy uh, for the rest of the, for the day. I wish I had your drive, my man. I have not been doing any fitness work during this lockdown. I only literally started today where I told myself I'm going to go on a no sugar diet and a no carbs diet. Um, I know I'm like six weeks late, but uh, it's better late than never. My body needed the rest, and I think it was well deserved. And now it's time to see if I can catch up with Darren there. Oh, yes, the V-lines, you want to see it, maybe can show us a little sum. sum. But listen, from the first episode of the show, up until now, you guys have such a special bond and maybe I even say a brotherhood. Why do you think uh, you guys just jowled like you guys are? <laughs> Oh, jeez, I would not have chosen a, a, any better partner. I mean, uh, what I lack in, Vazi makes up for it. And what he lacks in, I make up for it. When I'm like, jeez, when I'm super stressed, Vazi comes in as a captain. He's like, calm down, Darren. This is what needs to happen. If he's struggling, I laugh at it first, and then I help him out. <laughs> uh, it's, it's hilarious. Like, we're working with Vazi has been absolutely blessed. <laughs> Vazi, I mean, listen, the brother just hyped you up right now. Do you have maybe some words for him as well so that you can feel good as well about this bromance? <laughs> I think uh, the main thing is that we both wanted the same results at the end of the game, mm. um, regardless of how things turn 
and after the competition, we had the same goal in terms of winning, and um, we did whatever it took to get us there. You know, we had our ups and downs. Um, it wasn't the most consistent performance that you've ever seen in your life, but um, I think we just tried to give it our all. And through that, we, we, we formed our own special little bond and our own special little friendship. And uh, it's one of those uh, friendships that you can never, ever forget. <laughs> I feel like you two might need your own room and maybe some tissues as well because the love between the two of you. But, of course, we only have a few weeks left until the finale. But looking back, what has been some of the best highlights yeah. from the season? Jeez, uh, struggling at, uh, on different challenges and uh, seeing how we struggled together. I think that was basically the main highlight. I mean, we struggled together and, and then we just made it back to the top again. And yeah. it's, it's been such a roller coaster, but it's been such a great experience. <laughs> Bozzy, can you swim now? Um, I realized no. But I think one of the things that uh, made us such a formidable team is that we quickly learned each other's weaknesses and strengths early on in the competition. So when it came to challenges, we weren't shocked at the fact that Darren can't do this or Vazi can't do that. And uh, that was the mentality we took throughout the competition. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, we, 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 are, we, are, we are where we are because of that. Yep. I love that. Tonight is the last elimination episode of the season. How do you guys feel about making it this far in the competition? Oh, yes, uh, this is a nervous position to be in. I mean, as you've seen, it's basically two teams against one. I mean, uh, both, us and, uh, both us and I know yeah. that we're strong and we know that we can do this. It's just the confidence. It's all about confidence. And I think the most difficult part of it all was uh, the fact that we have to gift a team a point. Mm. So, yeah, that, that, that's really tough between having to choose between mango, I mean, uh, pineapple and cool red. Um, for us, probably was the most difficult decision to make because we literally have no allies going into this week's challenges and um, we have nothing but us. <laughs> The, the two of us, you know, so yeah, people should just uh, stay tuned and check out how that's going to unfold. Listen, you have each Ooh. other and that's all that counts. Guys, congratulations for making it this far and thank you so much for your time this morning. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs> Listen, it's all getting so real as we only have three episodes left of this season of Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao. Now, if you want to know which two teams will battle it out in the finale, remember to watch the last elimination episode tonight at 7.30pm right here on SABC3. And wait for it. You can win while watching your favourite show with your favourite Tropica flavour in hand. All you have to do is take a picture with your Tropica and tweet it using hashtag Tropica to stand a chance of winning your share of data and cash prizes. Tonight at 7.30 on Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao. The remaining three teams enter the Tropica Long Life Ceremony for one last time. Points don't matter now. There's an epic elimination challenge. Get that nose behind the line! Ah, who will finish first? The road to fame and fortune continues on Tropica Island of Treasure, Curacao. That's tonight at 7.30 only on SABC3. The stage is yours. Own it. Oh, yes, it's on tonight, half past seven on SABC3. It's Tropica Island of Treasure Curacao. Got me all so excited. Uh, now, with most of you baking your way through lockdown, let's talk about baking. Uh, we hope that these crushed fruity scones that we're about to make make it to your baking repertoire because they are so impressive. Packed with vitamins A, C, and E, Crush has a range of 100% fruit juice flavors your family will enjoy with pure goodness in every glass and pure goodness in every taste. Indeed, a perfect pairing to this tasty treat that we're about to make. Nicole Snelling, oh, when you said scones, I said, say no more. I am coming to your high tea, lady. Thank you. Well, <laughs> welcome to the high tea. I'm about yes. to make you some upgraded scones. Thanks so much for that. So let's first get our fruit. Um, what do you, what do you rehydrate it? Okay. So these are dried fruit. We've got apricots and dried cranberries. Great. So okay. what you do is you put four tablespoons. The recipe calls for to put in the microwave, but we're going to do it obviously on the stove okay. here. So it's nice to know that you can do it on the microwave or in the microwave yeah. as well as on the stove itself. Um, a lot of people that I know certainly did go out and buy lots of dried fruit mm -hmm. uh, when they heard about the lockdown. The panic buyers, <laughs> the panic buyers. I'm Shame not looking at anyone. Shame on you. Uh, but now you are at home stuck with... 
with all these dried fruit because you realize you actually can go to the shop and buy essential goods. You don't need to have exactly. what 12,5 kgs of dried fruit. <laughs> but uh, that's where we come in. Now you, you can gonna... use them. <laughs> so you can use any dried fruit that you have. You could use raisins. I'm sure a lot of people have that. You can even add nuts in here as well if you nice. want to. But any good scone starts with butter and flour. Okay. So we've added that in. A little bit of sugar for the sweetness. Yes. A little bit of baking powder. That's your rising agents. Mm -hmm. Baking and powder. Okay, salt. baking powder. Baking okay. powder. <laughs> right, some cool. salt there as well. Uh, what does the salt then do with all that combination? Is it to neutralize the, the, the reaction? It brings out flavor. It brings out the flavor. flavor. Okay, Otherwise, cool. you're going to have very bland flower tasting scones okay. and you don't want that nobody at all. wants that so okay. this is where you get your fingers involved this is also a great way to get the kids involved as mm. well because it's super fun nice. I mean I love it it's so therapeutic so you just um, rub the flour and the butter together because that's almost your shortening method that's okay. what you want you want beautiful flaky scones and this is how you achieve it oh is that where the flakiness yeah. of it all comes you, from mm -hmm, rubbing in your butter nothing is ever coincidental when it comes to scones it seems like or when it comes to anything baked yeah, it's a science it's it really is a science that's why when you when you bake just make sure you do it properly because yeah. you have so much effort yeah. you've got ingredients that you don't want to go to waste you've got your butter you've got your fruit this beautiful fruit juice you don't want any of it to go to waste so just yeah. do it properly follow the recipe i have to tell you this is the first time that i have seen fruit juice being brought into the mix of anything baked so this is quite interesting yeah. and i think it's going to inspire a lot of people out there uh, because the thing is on social media everywhere you turn people are baking something so every much day. banana bread especially banana <laughs> bread has become so so popular popular uh, and it's so good to see uh, people are doing very interesting things but also they are looking at ways to elevate it mm -hmm. and make it interesting and new and fresh and exciting for their family so I'm just straining the the juice there just because you can always add more okay. rather than having to add flour so we can okay. throw Better in your to have yeah more. no less is more and oh. you can always add more oh okay yeah. cool. So, like my consumer's teacher in high school taught me, when you're making scones, I never, we were never allowed to use a spoon, always a knife, because you've got to cut it. So you don't want to, you're cutting it because you're shortening the flour, it's a very um, pastry term. So okay. if you mix it too much, you're working the gluten, you're going to land up with chewy buns, almost okay. like a roll rather than a scone. Yeah, well class is in session and I hope you've got your <laughs> notepads out. Shortening the flour, that's the term for the day. Shortening the flour, which means what again, Nicole? Shortening the flour, you you're make it flaky, oh, yes. make it flaky. and that's you don't it. stretch the gluten in the flour. We are in the process of assembling a whole uh, baking dictionary, myself and Nicole here. <laughs> you better be taking notes. By the time the lockdowns are over, I promise you we're going to have a whole A4 page with all the terminology uh, that Not you use A4, in baking. A4, we want a book, a book. we got to train you well okay. to be so. Okay, Nicole, let's take it easy, let's take it easy. <laughs> it's our first time, okay? <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, so as you can see, it comes together very beautifully. Mm -hmm. At this good. point, you, you can see you don't need to add any more liquid. So if I added all of this, it uh -huh. would have been too wet. Uh, so it's good that you put it on the side. Exactly. Okay, cool. So what do you do after this? Just flour your surface because mm -hmm. you don't want it to stick. Yes. You're going to take your beautiful scone mixture. Mm -hmm. Flouring the surface. Flouring the surface. Flouring. That means placing... Flour on, flour on the surface. <laughs> <laughs> so <Something> that <laughs> your whatever mixture you've made doesn't stick onto the surface. Exactly. Flouring the surface. So using a cookie cutter, if you don't have one, use a glass. Like, as you can see there, I've just put flour over it okay, so cool. that it doesn't stick when you I like that. cut it out. Cookie cutting. Cookie cutting means no, no need for that. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this is this is all that you do. Okay. Cut it out, pop it onto a baking sheet uh -huh. on a preheated of 190. All oh, right, 190 is usually 190. 180. Why is it 190 this time? Because you want a little bit of a higher heat because they they are smallish scones, oh, yeah. so you don't want um, them to go for too long. Okay. Otherwise, you are going to dry them out, oh, okay. and that's why the higher heat helps them. The fruit adds so much character to the scones. Uh, Definitely, you don't see this often. And uh, but I think the taste of the juice coming in there as well exactly. is going to make it such a unique uh, taste the altogether. The juice is infused into the fruit. That's why that. you rehydrate it with the fruit juice. Okay. People usually do water. Why do water when you can have orange juice? <sighs> 
Hello. Right. <laughs> uh, well, our recipe today was inspired by the scone recipes that have been shared during our Clover competition. We've received so many. We are so inspired by the amazing work that you guys are doing at home. One of our top fans, uh, Radhika Hansraj, says that the secret to her scones is using Clover sour cream and Clover mama bake. Ah, that mama bake. That mama bake. Inez Maybach says, uh, uh, you know, also earned her baking stripes by sharing a picture of her delicious malva pudding, which she serves with Clover classic custard. We love it. It looks so, so good. Look so at that, good. so yummy. Uh, there simply is no better combination. We love that, uh, Inez. And of course, uh, the question to all of you now is, have you entered? Simply reply to the Clover Competition post on our Facebook page, Express or Morning Show SABC3, or our Twitter page, by posting a picture of your recipe creation. Use the hashtag LoveClover and tell us which Clover product you used to create your dish. There will be one winner every week until the 29th of May. You've still got some time. Uh, we're gonna be looking at the most creative recipe you Using a clover product, any clover product, uh, and the winner will win a clover love pack hamper and will be making uh, that recipe right here on the show. So it's an opportunity for your recipe to shine. So get your pots ready and enter T's and C's. You can find them on expressoshow.com. Uh, and now it's yeah. about taste. Yes, please do don't let all my hard work and baking yeah. go to waste. Taste. Until, do you know please. what taste means? Taste is when Tabiso opens his mouth, takes the goodie that's and finished, and tell me it's great, and <laughs> gives feedback. Oh, yes. Good, good. Oh, yes. It is so <laughs> magnifique. 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 Good. I love it. Thank mm. you. Yes. Mm. Clover Crush. 100% pure fruit juice packed with vitamins and no added sugar. Crush your daily goodness. Now also available in long life. Made with love by Clover. for staying with your Feel Good Breakfast Show, Expresso here on SABC3. A bit of health chat now. Uh, we know that the immune system is a multi-level defense network against potentially harmful bacteria and viruses. But with the coronavirus pandemic on everyone's mind, there is a lot of attention on the immune system and what role it plays as a defense force against diseases causing bacteria and viruses. And so we chat to infectious disease specialist, Dr. Emil Reed, on the importance of having a strong strong immune system over these very, very difficult times. Dr. Reed, thank you so much for joining us once again. Good morning, Tabisha. How are you? I'm doing very, very well, Doctor. Doctor, the immune system is, is, is a big topic at the moment. Why is it important to have a strong and healthy one? Well, Tabisha, the, 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 immune, the word immune actually means to, to protect. So, so it actually makes perfect sense that the body has some system in place um, in order to fight off illnesses, diseases, parasites, etc. That system is called the immune system. The immune system is made up out of a network of cells, B cells, T cells, lymphocytes, neutrophils, etc. Made up out of a lot of tissue, uh, for instance, bone marrow and also thymus, um, which actually assist the body to, to protect itself as well. So, therefore, having a strong immune system means less susceptibility to infections and also for the body to actually be able to fight off infections much quicker. Oh, what a hard-working network, doctor. Okay, so can yeah. having a strong immune system support us in fighting nasty viruses and bacteria, such as the coronavirus, for example, can it act as, as a defense system? 
Exactly, exactly. The, the most important thing is you can just think of a virus or a bacteria getting into the body and, and the immune system immediately recognizes uh, this infection, virus or bacteria, as being foreign and completely destroys it. Um, the other component of our immune system um, has got to do with something called the B cells. And, and the B cells are responsible for, for producing um, antibodies. And what an antibody does, an antibody is part of your memory cells in the body. So if it gets to meet that same virus again at a later stage, it will immediately recognize it and lock it down and destroy it, which means that your, your body memorizes the infection it had build up antibodies against it, which means hopefully forever you will be uh, able to prevent yourself from having that infection again. So if we have, uh, you know, if we find that we are getting sick more than once a year, does this mean we have a weak immune system, doctor? Not really. Well, it might mean that, but on the other side, it, it might just mean that you are exposed to different viruses or different illnesses that you haven't been exposed before. Um, it depends on uh, uh, density of population. So if you live in a population that is dense and crowded, the chances are more likely that you will be um, uh, experiencing recurrent uh, uh, infections. Um, so, so it's depending on the environment that you find yourself in, but it also depends on your, your own body's immune system, you know, and, and there are certain factors that influences our immune system. Some of them are related to, to diseases we might have, uh, for instance, diabetes, hypertension, um, and even HIV and AIDS can make your immune system weak. And, and there are also certain congenital, um, which means abnormalities that you are born with, that actually cause some form of immune deficiency that makes you more susceptible for, for certain uh, diseases. The other things that can, can lead to, to these poor immune function are things like uh, smoking, alcohol abuse, uh, poor sleep quality that can also suppress your immune system, uh, excessive stress, and, and uh, even malnutrition in certain countries and certain parts of, of South Africa. Um, and in, in South Africa also um, less sun exposure, which actually leads to a decrease in vitamin D, which we all know plays an important part in, in our immune system. Mm. What are some of the important factors uh, that one can sort of employ to manage the immune system, to strengthen it, to keep it healthy, Dr. Reed? Well, I think the, the most important one is to get enough sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think not all of us get enough sleep. I certainly don't get enough sleep. Um, the, the next one would probably be to drink plenty of water because it flushes out these toxins, it rehydrates the body. Um, and it carries uh, nutrients to, to the cells that your body readily need. Um, there are some, some foodstuffs that, that are very, very important, like, for instance, berries, uh, blueberries, cranberries, and, and greens like kale spinach, broccoli. It's very healthy because it, it consists of a lot of flavonoids, mm. polyphenols, and antioxidants. Garlic uh, consists of allicin, helps to fight infection. And I think uh, things like nuts and seeds uh, consist of selenium, which is extremely important for our bodies. Then we need to find a way how, how are we going to manage our, our stresses and, and daily stresses because it leads to anxiety, it leads to depression, mm -hmm. lack of sleep, high blood pressure. And, and uh, under these circumstances, exercises, meditation, uh, reading, etc., before you go to bed are amazing. So all of these things, and I know the list is probably endless um, things we can do in order to keep our immune system strong and healthy. Mm. It does sound like there is an endless list of things that we can do, and it's actually uh, yes. so easy to keep your immune system strong and healthy. Exactly. 
Oh, Dr. Emil Reed, thank you once again for making time to chat to us. Always such a joy and such an enlightening experience having chats with you. A huge pleasure, Tabisa. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, Dr. Emil Reed is an infectious disease specialist. Now, with the immune system playing such a vital role, it's very important that we take the right steps in maintaining a healthy and strong immune system. Give it the care that it needs. Now, Immuenza helps to support your immune system, whilst Corenza Parasi helps you in fighting off that winter flu. These are your winter cold and flu companions. Looking for immune support? Immuenza and Corenza Parasi. Your winter cold and flu companions. Thank you so much, Uncle Tapsy and Dr. Emil Reed, for that also important conversation about maintaining a very strong immune system, especially during COVID-19. It's all we now, can do, really. Yes, yeah. exactly. Now, as corona lockdown restrictions ease around the world, the way we visit stores and malls will change completely. So it's important to think about the ways to keep safe and healthy. With their lockdown, Game on Point, our friends at Game Stores have, have us covered with all their necessary hygiene measures in store. Hi, I'm Duval van Rijn, Operations Director here at Game. And I'm a PA system taking social distancing to the next level. Now our Head of Ops is going to lay down how we are keeping our lockdown game on point. We're taking all the necessary measures to increase hygiene in our stores. We're increasing the frequency of wipe downs for tall surfaces, pen pads, store shelves, shopping trolleys and baskets. We have also implemented a deep cleaning roster. But that's not all. We are also limiting the amount of customers in store and introducing floor and till distancing signage to ensure everyone remembers to stay safe. Why are we telling you all this? Because games got you and you've got game. <laughs> you and got game, game has got you. You got oh, game. Oh man, I love it. So remember that during lockdown, game is taking it to another level. You can buy groceries, pet food, cleaning items, hand sanitizer, which you can pretty much get everywhere now. Baby products, uh, stationery, even DIY and gardening tools, as well as small appliances, things like kettles and toasters at Game. And also, just in time for winter, go and check out their range of heaters. And if you find any essential products at a cheaper price elsewhere, show them online in store and they will beat the price by 10% on the difference. What? That's quite a thing to do, actually. Yeah. That's quite a thing to do. Uh, and there's quite a price war happening at the moment, which is awesome. So um, that's their price beat promise and we challenge you to put it to the test. Yes, please. And remember, they are open Monday to Friday from 9 to 5 and Saturday, Sunday and public holidays from 9 to 3. We know it's been tough, South Africa. To distance yourself from the warmth of KZN's shores. From exploring the majestic mountaintops of the Ukashamba Drakensberg. To dancing to the beat of Zulu warriors. From enjoying the thrills of ziplining down Africa's longest zipline at Lake Eland and marvelling at our World Heritage Sites and beauty of the Isimanga Liso Wetland Park, to creating unforgettable adventures walking amongst the Big Five. But while you're missing out on these unbelievable experiences for now, distancing yourself from all the things you love to do, remember, KZN will see you soon. Kumbula, IKZN is only born a Gungebuda. Believe it.
Welcome back, all you beautiful people. You are still kicking a beat right here with your Feel Good Breakfast crew on SABC3. Now, this morning, we're continuing this conversation about time management, especially for the parents out there. How have you been able to adjust to that? So we posted this question. Time management can be a challenge when learning online. Online, sorry. How have you structured, you know, homeschooling? What has been some of those challenges? And a lot of people have been coming through with their, um, their answers. One of them being Claudia saying it has helped them by setting daily goals on all subjects, planning out their day from the time they wake up, breaks in between for refreshing. It really motivates them when they achieve those daily goals. And I hope you're putting a snack in there as well, Mom, Claudia. <laughs> uh, another one comes through from Mulemo saying, I'm a learner and I'm doing all my best to manage my time so that I can learn through online studies, although it's not the same when a teacher explains this to me. I understand, but this is the challenges that we face during this time. Definitely, indeed. And now Karuna has something to say. She says, Jamie, you look amazing, firstly. Oh. So, <laughs> and then we receive a schedule every Monday for the week with all the activities that we need to do. We sit down at the dining room table and work there every day since day one of lockdown. And I think it's really cool to see how this is actually bringing structure back into people's lives mm. and some more consistency and hopefully some sanity too. So we've got another one from Yulian. Actually, this one's from YouTube and she says, my heart really goes out to every matriculant, especially this year. So be strong, boys and girls, and I always give my support to primary school learners and I'm willing to help matrix as well. Well, Yulian is out there to assist us, but we've got some more online learning happening and uh, Tabisa is going to be chatting to us about learning violence online. Very interesting stuff. Let's check it out. You're with your Feel Good Breakfast show. It is Expresso right here on SABC3. Now, there's a saying that goes, when you play a violent piece, you are a storyteller and you are telling a story. The non-profit organization Muzu Kids has been helping children from disadvantaged communities in Cape Town tell their stories through online violent lessons. And Muzu Kids has helped students from various communities remain united through their violent lessons during this national lockdown, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, founder of Muzu Kids, Maria Buerta, joins us this morning on a video call to tell us more about this wonderful world and this virtual violin lessons that she has been offering. Maria, good morning. Thank you so much for making time. Uh, firstly, how did you start Music Kids and how did the, the online violin lessons come about? Well, if you had asked me two months ago that uh, if you can teach a violin online, I would have just immediately told you impossible. <laughs> So Music Kids started in uh, 2015 and we've been working with many, many children um, coming into a venue in, in the city for the past four or five years. And when this lockdown came, it was like, no, how, how can we get to these kids? How, how are they going to be able to continue violent? And I was in total shocked, like paralyzed. And yeah, the, the solutions were there, uh, not more difficult than find a cell phone in a house and, and, and start by sending them little videos on WhatsApp. This makes me so, so happy. Honestly, you've put a smile on my face this morning just telling this story. But uh, what about students who then don't have access to computers or have no data or Wi-Fi for the virtual lessons? How do you, how do you manage that? Well, the children that we are working with come from all the surrounding informal settlements around Cape Town. They don't have computers, they don't have iPads. And I just realized the only way we can connect with them, the only way we can get them to receive their lessons would be to find one phone in a family. Um, we literally send them data on that number that we have available. And of course, where there's a guardian, a parent, an uncle, whoever that phone belongs to, is going to have to give their phones to the children to receive their lessons and, and and it's working i mean i've got a girl that practiced yesterday her dad told me from 11 o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon and i'm so thankful that we can use this precious time where they literally have nothing else to do to get them to enjoy just practicing their violence and have something to do for that matter this is terrific. I think that, you know, there are so many challenges that come with it, including access to a computer or a cell phone from which to record these videos. But you see just how much you're able to arrive at the different solutions when you really apply yourself. But I love the fact that you're getting the whole family involved and interacting with this process as well. This is just so incredible. But why was it so important for you uh, to start these online lessons? Um, I just believe, you know, it's not because you are born in a poor area that you are poor. 
and it's so important for me i'm teaching these children as well and the whole process of learning to play the violin it it makes them positive it makes um it it just creates it creates so much beauty within and so much um emotional stimulation as well and i didn't want these children to feel suddenly abandoned after this long a uh, four-year road that we've been traveling with them to just feel now they cut off just because they are living in areas where there are no means to access computers, internet, etc. And I think it's a fabulous escape for them, mm. you know, to just play the violence for hours and to, to have this incredible thing that they realize they can do something that no one else has. And I look at some of them when they send us back their little videos and I see kids in the background coming out in the alleys and listening to them. So I think they become heroes of their neighborhood. <laughs> You really are building communities through the work that you are doing here. But of course, you are doing more work. I uh, suppose you, you, you're playing your part in other ways to help those in need during the lockdown. How can uh, people make a donation and what can they donate to this cause? Uh, please let us know how we can all step in and help. Yes, you know, sometimes when you say donation, it's such a big word and, and people immediately think of millions. And to to participate to one child just accessing education, if you've got 50 rand in your wallet, you, it's by a simple press of a button, you can go to the website and you can, um, the website of Music Kids, and you can just put that 50 rand out of your wallet, even 20 rand is going to give them some minutes of data to continue to follow their lessons. And the website is musickids.co.za, as easy as that. Maria Buerta, hear it from me, and I'm sure you've heard this one before. You are a total hero. Thank you so much for the amazing work that you are doing for these children, but not just for these children, for society in general. You really are a part of the South African story we love to hear, the South African story that shows that there is so much potential and so much possibility when we all bend together to do good out there. Thank you so much for joining us on the line this morning, Maria. I love speaking about these beautiful children. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, a big thanks to the founder of Music Kids, Maria Botha, for joining us and sharing more about how music has been uplifting the children who need it most. Of course, we can all join in and help go on to musickids.co.za. Welcome back, you beauties. Thank you so much for keeping it locked on your feel-good breakfast show. It's about to get even more feel-good as we continue our Eid inspiration. If you're looking for a little of that, look no further than Chef Clem, who's been on point today. And this seems like you're drawing from, like, nostalgic memories, which we absolutely love, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Hopefully, he'll inspire you with his classic strawberry fridge tart. And I hear it's a classic. The crust is made up of tennis biscuit base, which we love as well, uh, filled with a mixture of strawberry jelly, strawberry yogurt, and a little cream on top. And if you think that was not decadent enough, he is going to add fresh strawberries and chocolate as well as the final touches. I hope I haven't given it all away. That wasn't like a bit of a spoiler. I'm done. Cheers, Alert. guys. Yeah. Graham's done just, all, You're going to so... leave. Um, but this, you know, eat, your eat preparations you absolutely yeah. love because it, it does feel nostalgic. It's so weird for me, like, when it comes to, like, tradition in general, different cultures, what I find brings me like to this point where I just love all culture, all tradition. It's the it's how everyone gathers around food. Yeah. Either at the beginning, in the middle, at the end of it. So my appreciation for like cultures, it's it's amazing. I just get so involved in the culture, like how we just gather. Imagine at the how end. much of your foodie self was developed during this time growing up. Absolutely love it. Okay. Exactly, exactly. So Forget talking about this right here. That looks gorgeous. Yeah, I mean when I started telling people like. Don't forget to uh, tune in 
today I'm gonna make this free chocolate. But it was like, what? I haven't seen anyone make that in years. It's the Nostalgic. easiest recipe, number yeah. one. And I love like old school recipes. It's very vibrant and saturated, like almost like mm. not real, but like look how pink that is. I know it. Do it doesn't look like yeah. you could create that in a like, kitchen, but it's when I was younger, when people used to say well, guess guess the flavor or something, and it was that I used to say the flavor's pink <laughs> because it is just so saturated. It's, the flavor is cerise. The f uh. it, it is. It's so delicious and so easy to make, and it starts off with that crust. So all this okay. is is tin tennis biscuits and butter crushed up together, and you just pack it into a spring form tin. And, and it's, I mean, you, yes, you could go for a lighter, you know, more nutritious option, but the, I'm sorry, the flavor of like, yeah. you know, you got the coconut in those tennis biscuits and that with the butter and as a toast off, it's going to be amazing. It's, it's, it's amazing. Magic. Magic. And you have got some cream, just some stiff peak whip, which means when you actually move it around and when you don't drop it, it holds a stiff peak. Sure. That's what it is. Then I've got some beautiful strawberry yogurt. Mm -hmm. You got that? Going That's going fat, in. Eh? Yeah, I'm going full fat. You can totally, uh, this recipe doesn't depend on like the fat ratio. Okay. So okay. go for whatever you feel like. That's going in, and I love this one because it got like those strawberry bits in there as well. Mm. And all you're gonna do is just give that a, a good mix together and incorporate these two. Then what I did was my setting agent. You asked earlier, is agility? Yeah, here? kind of. The, the setting agent is coming from actual jelly. It's jelly. And all I did was, <laughs> yeah. And it's like again, it's yeah. like nostalgic strawberry flavor. It's insane. So all I did was I reduced the amount of liquid that I would normally use to set the jelly, okay. and I'm gonna set it in this yogurt and cream mixture. Okay. Careful because it does actually sit very quickly. You can even wow, see. Wow! Yeah, you can see the gel. Yeah, and if it there, yeah. if it does sit too much, just pop the, this bowl in a bit of simmering water, stir, 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 and it will soften again. Break so it don't down. worry about that. Break that's cool. fine. But wow, what look is at that color, man? <laughs> uh, the <laughs> color. Cool, yeah. And that's that. Like I remember this being done with crushed pineapple, mm. and you would get that yellow from the pineapple or pomegranate, not pomegranate, uh, passion fruit. Yeah. 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 Mm. And I think it's so amazing. I love like this whole. Carnival food, or uh, we used to have like games night at school, yeah. and all the aunties used to make this. It was so so amazing. Cut it into slices, sell it off it. Yeah, actually that's Five what I'm gonna do. Slice when the show's perfect. done, ten rand a slice. Ten rand. Ten I said five rand. Come it's on. locked down. Oh man. Fifteen rand. It's went up. Just went up. I'm not even okay, going cool. to eat it, man. Come on. Oh, look, okay. this is amazing. You you know you can actually set this in the bowl. And you and Lindsay tonight put the kids to sleep. Just sit with a bowl. And <laughs> just chow. Just chow. Yes. It's, I mean, why not? Make, make twice as much so you can leave some to set and some you can chow just straight. Mm. Exactly. So what are you going to do now? And I love this recipe. No baking. No baking. Everything happens in the fridge. And into your base, you just pour that filling. Oh, wow. Um, how thick was the base of the, the base? <laughs> the, the base, I mean, it doesn't have to be that thick. The magic is the butter. The butter sets that biscuit okay, really fine, well. So you don't have to rely on your base being too thick. I use a pack of tennis biscuits. Okay, cool. That's fine. That's all you need. This goes to the fridge. About four hours later, you're good. Okay. You'll be eating. It comes out just like this. Now, what you're going to okay, do is you're going to want to add that, 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 that old school pizzazz. <laughs> so I've got is, some. Is there anything better than strawberries and cream? I don't think so. No. And the good thing is, if you're shopping at Woolies now on Daily Difference, get the promo strawberries, cream, and those prawns we made earlier, all in Daily Difference. Mm. Yeah, so you're saving as you're spending. So you just pipe. There's method to your madness. Exactly. Oh, I found out you're allergic to prawns. Dude, it's like the great tragedy of my life, but I, I, I know there's worse things happening to far better people in the world, but it, it's, it's rough out there. It's, it's rough. It's tough, man. Talking about rough, with a word of, uh, word of advice, when you eat that garlic prawn recipe, make sure you're not going out anywhere afterwards, <laughs> because true story, eat a heavily garlicky dish and then put your mask on. Woo! Friend, you will be <laughs> inhaling garlic <laughs> all day. It negates the whole social distancing thing if you are still smelling garlic for the rest of the day and your mask. Exactly. Your, your beautiful cloth mask. Whole strawberries. Uh, this is not even cut. This is got whole strawberry. Everybody oh, gets wow. a treat. Everybody gets a treat. How like nostalgic oh, very does this look? Programmable of you. That's very cool. I love this. Then. Woolies have these amazing ripple chocolates. Mm. We give you that amazing, like, I, was I made a, uh, Jack's third birthday cake with those. Those were the little <laughs> logs on top for the dinosaurs to walk around because I made a dinosaur cake. I'm so impressed. They're so cool, I'm man. so impressressed. Um, and okay. incidentally, the strawberries are also on special at Woolies. At yes, the moment. check them out. So, like I said, we've got that cream from the Daily Difference. We've got the strawberries. We've got the prawns. Even the tin tomato we used for the previous dish. Everything's of Daily Difference. And that's amazing because right now, during lockdown, we're trying to save money. But we're still trying to feed the families, you yeah. know, get dinner on the table. That's the mission, that's the goal. So, get your ripple chocolate. Well, you just took a tart to almost cake level now. Yeah, now but it's I, starting to look like an Insta cake. It kind of, I kind of like built a time machine because this is taking me back to the 90s. Uh, I mean, I, I was born 
The 90s it, it, wasn't that long ago, no. man. We, like, come on, man. Exactly. Come Isn't Kukle like... <laughs> Kukle is... Kukle's, Were you born in the... Kukle is 19. <laughs> Isn't Kukle 19? I don't appreciate this drag, you see now? <laughs> when were you was she born in the nineties when Kukla's uh, mom has to sign a permission slip for her to come in every day? <laughs> <laughs> the viewers don't know this. She has to get permission from her mom every day. <laughs> she does her homeschooling here, we help her. It's what great. is going on? I'm gonna tell you tomorrow. Tomorrow on Jake. Lani! I just like, guys, it's not Takalani. <laughs> Don't tease Kukle. She's amazing. <laughs> All right, uh, okay. She's an old soul, man. So let's talk soul. about this tart. Now, honestly, <laughs> this, this, this fridge tart makes my heart so happy, and I know I'm going to owe Kukle after this. this. This makes my heart so happy because I try to recreate something like from a time when like things were, I want to say, like a little easier. We, can like, you make we, it better we, than your mama? You can no. never, you can never improve on what your mom made. I know this, I know this. So, but this is honestly amazing. It's making my heart feel so happy. I'm I hope the viewers out there would have tried this. It's such please, an easy dish. Please do it and please post tons of pictures. And you can get, of course, the entire recipe on expressoshow.com. We've got all our recipes online. And I really suggest you go to Woolies now. Check out their daily different specials because there are a ton of them. You can create these beautiful meals at a really good price. Well done, buddy. Yeah. yeah. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> got no volume. Fuck. <laughs> it's almost about that time where we say goodbye, but before we do, we have so much in store for you. We do indeed, and tomorrow on the show, we're going to be doing something really special. We're talking about the power of yoga and meditation and how important it is, especially during this current pandemic that we're in. And of course, tomorrow I will be then further delivering you with a <laughs> guided yoga meditation session. So grab your towels and join us for something special. Yeah. Also on the menu tomorrow with Chef Clem, he's going to be making crispy baby marrow fries yeah! and phyllo um, pastry <laughs> cheese strip. Also, Nicole is going to be cooking up a storm with chicken stew for those oh-so-cold winter days. But you do not have to wait until tomorrow because we've got some more magic happening straight after the show. After the show. So join us on Facebook Live where Nicole's going to be taking us through one of her easy DIY white sauces. <laughs> so I think we're going to enjoy that one indeed. So that's Facebook Live right now. Make sure you're tuning in. <laughs> Espresso Show, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.